in this video, we're looking at the very important idea of interpreting the results of a confidence interval when forming a confidence interval for the difference between two population means. So I've written the kind of classic statement you might find if you constructed a confidence interval for the difference between male and female exam scores. So let's just say that we did this calculation and um, we ended up with this set of results. So we're 95% confident that the true mean difference between male and female exam one scores is between 3.8 and 4.9 points. So let's say if that was our result, and we have this statement which is supposed to convey the idea of the results, but I'm afraid that a lot of people reading this would not understand what this actually means. So what we want to be able to do is to be able to look at something like this and make sense of it. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this statement because even though it's you know, a perfectly legitimate statement and it conveys the idea, too many people are unable to make any sense of it. So what I'm going to do is just strip away kind of the words here, look at the numbers that result from the um, calculation, look at the way the difference was constructed, and from there get a set of rules to interpret these intervals, a set of rules we can use in all cases. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase this statement and start looking at that. What we're going to do is pretend we looked at males and female test scores. And we're going to do it from the point of view of um, subtraction being done in the order of males minus females. So in other words, my interval is estimating the following difference. My interval is estimating this difference. The mean for males minus the mean for females. Okay, so the male mean minus the female mean, let's say for exam one test scores. So let's look at the cases. Let's say we have case one. Let's say we do a confidence interval and we end up with the following results. Minus 8 to minus 12. So this is our confidence interval. This is supposed to be estimating this true difference, right? So we're saying this true difference is somewhere between these two numbers. The first thing we want to notice is that both of the limits here, both confidence interval limits are negative. So what does that tell us if they're both negative? In order to figure that out, we have to think about this subtraction problem, right? We have to think about it, you know, if these are exam scores, you know, typically they both be something in the uh, 70s or 80s, something like that, right? Some average exam score, maybe in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, something like that. And if you were to subtract them and end up with a negative result, how does that happen, right? Now let's say, for example, the average value for males was 72, and the average value for females was only 70. When we subtract 72 and 70, we don't get a negative number, we get a positive number, right? So how is it that that subtraction could end up being negative? Well, to figure that out, of course, it's obvious that the second number has to be bigger, right? For example, what if the average score for females was 80? 72 minus 80 would give you a difference of negative 8, right? It's an 8 point difference, and it's negative because the back number here is bigger than the front number. So we end up with a negative result. So what does it mean that both of these limits are negative? It means that we're saying that the difference between these two items is indicating, since both limits are negative, that it must mean that the female mean is bigger than the male mean. Because the only way you subtract two numbers like this and end up with a negative result is if the number on the back end is larger than the number on the front end. So, that indicates then that the females had the higher average than the males. That's because both of these limits are negative. Simple interpretation, right? All right, now, what happens in the second case? What happens in case number two? So again, in this case, we concluded that female, females scored higher, right? Females scored higher because we had negative limits and the females were on the back end. So when you do the subtraction, the only way it becomes out negative on both pieces is if, of course, the females did better. What about case two? Case two, we have a scenario where the numbers turn out to be something like 10 and 12. Now they're both positive. So using the same kind of logic, but thinking about when you would subtract two numbers like this and end up with a positive result. Well, that's going to happen whenever this first guy here is larger than the second one, right? If this is 100 and this is 70, you get 30 as a difference. 30, of course, being positive because the first number here is bigger than the second one. So when this happens, it indicates that the mean for males was higher than the mean for females. In other words, males 
scored higher. And of course, you can go on further to say the difference between their points is somewhere between 10 and 12, right? So they scored between 10 and 12 points higher. Here you would say that the females scored between 8 and 12 points higher, something like that, right? And then case three. The third case that can happen, the only other possible scenario, is you get something like this. Something like, you know, uh, negative 8 up to positive 3. So now we don't have a clear-cut case. We have a negative interval limit and we have a positive interval limit. That means that 0 is within the interval, right? Note that 0 is within the interval because you can't go from the negative side of the number line to the positive side of the number line without crossing over 0. Remember, any one of the numbers in this interval are candidates for the true population difference. So if 0 is in the interval, it could be that 0 is the true difference. And if 0 is the true difference, it means that these two are the same. So if this mean was the same as this mean and you subtracted them, you would get 0. So it means that it's possible that males and females scored the same, right? So in this case there, it is possible, it is possible that there is no difference. There is zero difference, right? Zero difference between the two groups, meaning that males and females have scored the same on the exam one that you're looking at. All right, so those are the three cases. Uh, just a little side note on this one. If you look at this interval, though, it's a little more negative than it is positive. So what does that mean? It means that you know there's negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? So there are all those negative numbers, and the positive numbers are only 1, 2, 3, and of course all the decimals in between. But just to give you an idea, if you look at the number line, it's not perfectly symmetric around zero. It's a little more on the negative side. So this interval is a little more positioned on the negative side than it is on the positive side. The fact that it's a little more negative means that the sample mean for the female group is higher than the sample mean for the male group. That's what that indicates. So essentially, in case three, you know, we're saying yes, the female sample mean was higher than the male sample mean, but it wasn't significantly higher. It wasn't so high that you could say for certain that the females did better than the males. That could just be the normal fluctuation that occurs in sample data. So again, case one, case two, case three, we make the interpretation based on the sign of the interval, right? And of course, the, the magnitude of the difference is something we talk about afterwards, right? So the fact that these are both positive, we indicate the male scored higher, how much higher, somewhere between 10 and 12 points higher, right? That's the idea. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense because we're gonna use that a lot throughout the course. It's very important that when you see an interval that was formed, by subtracting two population means or two sample means to estimate two population means that you're able to interpret 